Good evening and welcome to the Time Chris Barnell. Reporting from Moscow. Tbilisi. Times Square. May your dreams be your only boundaries in life. Welcome to Living Well. I'm William Kinley. Holidays are a time for family gathering and fun-filled traditions, but they can also be a source of stress and tension. Donna Toskus, Director for Methodist Healthcare's Employee Assistance Program, joins me today with some tips on how to help reduce holiday stress. Donna, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much. So holidays are here. Let the fun begin. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> but yet some of us get depressed and frustrated. What's the deal? You know, I think that we just have really high expectations of the holiday. And uh, along with our regular day-to-day -day events and activities and responsibilities, we add this amazing amount of work all in the name of uh, holiday cheer. So you just uh, you set the bar so high that it's, you're just bound to be disappointed? Well, I, I think so. You know, when social media and our, and our uh, stores and our commercials on TV are talking about the holidays before Halloween. You know, you have this long period of time in which you're gearing up towards the holidays. I don't know what can really um, meet that expectation. Uh, it, it certainly uh, seems to get a little bit earlier every year, doesn't it? It does, it does. Uh, well, you've talked about this a little bit, but what are some tips you could share about how we can keep our expectations more in check? for a healthy holiday season? Mm -hmm. I think it has to do with communication with the whole family. It's sitting the family down and saying, you know, what's really important to you this holiday and, and let's do that. And so, you know, if one person really wants to do one event and another person really wants to do another, you know, try and incorporate all of that, but we don't have to do everything. We don't have to go to every cookie swap or every carol sing or every church event or work event or boy scout event. You know, pick and choose what makes most sense for the family and do that. Makes sense. I've heard folks say, you know, it's the holidays you're supposed to be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> just just because of what you say, we've always done these things, so we're going to do this and this and this That's and this right. and this. That's right. So you're saying maybe assess what value you're getting from it and how, it is impo how important it is to, to one another. That's right. A absolutely. That's, that's good. That's good. Um, how do we maintain some control? And one of the challenges, I think, with, with the holidays that I've, I see with our family is uh, so many folks in different leading leading things that it kind of gets crazy. How do you gain some control or is that an unrealistic expectation for the holiday season? I don't think that's an unrealistic expectation, you know, because we have to figure out what we can control and what we can't control. And so those things that we can control, we really need to wrap our arms around that and um, decide again, what is it that's important? So we can't forget to live during those amounts of time too. So it's so important to take care of yourself and to continue on those day-to-day -day things that we normally would do for self-care. We have to continue to do and just enjoy these events as they come. It, we don't have to eat, breathe, and drink the holiday. You know, I won't even listen to holiday music until maybe about a week before because I don't want to saturate myself with, with all of that. That helps me. You can only take so much Jim Brigman. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I mean, it's, it does. After a while, it just kind of gets to you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, one of, one of the things that uh, uh, that I find myself and, and maybe others do as well is you think back to your holidays in, in your past, either with a ch as you were a child or maybe with individuals or, or loved ones in your family that are not around anymore, mm -hmm. which certainly contributes to the, the melancholy nature of the holiday. 
how, how do we productively approach that? Mm -hmm. You, you know, somebody uh, shared a story with me today that I thought was fascinating that when their mom died that year on the Christmas tree, they took all of their mom's costume jewelry and decorated the Christmas tree with the costume jewelry. So it was a really Sweet. neat way to kind of incorporate all, 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 everything that they remembered and loved about their mom I into their holiday. So I think that when a loved one has passed or you're, you're thinking about Christmases that were great in the past, you need to think about what, how can you incorporate pieces of that into your current celebration so that you feel like those loved ones are with you or those past memories are with you. So you think it's good to bring it to the to the front, not mm -hmm. just kind of act like it's not there. No, absolutely. It, Which it's is never, probably not good with anything. It's never good to act <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. not there, you know. So I really think it's important, especially for those people that are grieving new losses. They're constantly thinking about this. So the way that we help them best is by being able to talk about it with them. How about uh, tips for approaching someone that has had a, had a recent loss that m maybe a you, you have some concern that, that they're going to be, they're kind of siloed by themselves for the holiday. Mm -hmm. how, how, how do you engage them? Mm -hmm. I think to be, have an open, honest discussion. So something like, um, I know that this holiday must be very difficult for you. I can only imagine what you're going through. Tell me what would be helpful to you to get through this holiday and, I, and I'll do that for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have this discussion, you open it up to offering help. And just, you know, someone knowing that you know where they're sitting and the journey they're taking is, is going to help that person a lot. That's, that's, that's very, very helpful. Kind of flipping to the, the other side, a, a different kind of question. You know, we're celebrating during the holidays. I'm not so sure that, that we, we, we've kind of forgotten how to celebrate as a, as a family, as people. Sometimes celebration is where we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. or we've got to be doing something. What are tips to, you know, to really celebrate? And it doesn't have to be around food or it doesn't right. have to be around an event necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we're all so busy, right? So I think a celebration is actually just getting together. And like mm -hmm. you said, it doesn't have to be around food. It doesn't have to be around everybody pile in and let's go to some location where we see lights. Um, you know, that's all has its place, but mm -hmm. being together, is, is a celebration. So maybe there's movie night. Mm -hmm. You know, let's pick a, a favorite holiday movie or maybe it's playing a couple of games, board games, but it's maybe it's looking through old photo albums. You mm -hmm. know, we, we don't have photo albums anymore because everybody's searching through their iPhone. Right, but right. maybe it's pulling out those old photo albums and, you know, just reliving and, and having fun together. That's a good idea. And it helps you just enjoy and bring the, the past good times to together. I think that's that's really important. Are there any other tips you'd like to share with me about how I can help reduce my stress for the holiday? <laughs> well, I think it's so important to realize that the holidays are specific days throughout this month and that we continue to do self-care. If you're exercising, continue to exercise. Um, just go easy on the food and the alcohol. Uh, every day does not have to be an indulgence. Thank you. It's time for a quick break. Blend and fam blended families can cause an additional layer of stress over the holidays. We'll be back with some advice to help you make your holidays merry. Um, it's interesting. Cold man Hennessy's window. Correction, dude. You broke. I just threw the ball. This is really bad. What are we gonna do? Dude, kiss your life goodbye. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Tell him it was an accident and we can fix the window. I'll come with you. GHS TV has a new website. You can now view any of our shows on our new media pages. 
or check out the latest Wake Up Germantown or Red Devil Post game. As always, we're streaming live 24-7. Just visit ghstv.org today. Welcome back. We're talking with Donna Toskus, Director for Methodist Healthcare's Employee Assistance Program. We're talking about how to survive the holidays as stress-free as possible. Donna, blended families uh, have uh, additional challenges to deal with in the holidays. What, what really causes those challenges? What causes the challenges in blended families is bringing together multiple family systems and how it is that they celebrate a holiday. So if you add the stress of what holiday is naturally, and then you bring in, um, you know, my parent, my father's family, my mother's family, my mother's new significant other's family, my father's significant other's family. So now it's like you've got all these balls going on in the air, and, and you're wondering, how do I navigate all of this? Sounds like we need a drink. I mean, it's <laughs> tough. I think back to just uh, just traditional uh, marriage and think back to when Carol and I were, were married. You, you blend just two traditions there, but right. then you have all of this. And I know with us, it's just pretty simple, really. And, uh, I just need to do everything that her family did, and we'd get along <laughs> great. But that's just that's two right. sides. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, but now you've got f multiple sides. Right. So that makes it difficult. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe is it fair to say possibly exacerbate some communication and trust and uh, that's there anyway, not just the holidays, they just kind of bring it to light more. Right, right, because in tense situations, um, everybody's best is going to take a back seat and everybody's worst is going to be up front and center. Now, I think it can be the flip side, though. It can be really fun because you we can get in a rut with our holidays mm -hmm. that by gosh this is the way this is what we do uh, we're That's gonna right. you're gonna be married no matter how miserable <laughs> you are but it brings some new things to the table too uh -huh. there's uh, great opportunities here too so instead of always thinking about what's going to be negative about this situation we need to think about what are the opportunities in this situation as well and if we can maintain respect towards all the parties involved you know, something really great can come of this. Oh, oh, no doubt. I, I think about things like with Thanksgiving, you know, every family has a different way that they make stuffing. Mm -hmm. Stuffing is like a great example of how different people can be. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just fascinating, but you could have all these different things and you put it together, you have more choice, you have more variety, it's just more interesting. That's right, that's right. Uh, with children, a, a particular challenge or, or opportunity, I think, because the crossover over generations, uh, and making them feel comfortable. I mean, mm -hmm. they may be at a point in their lives that they're just developing, uh, and they're not as comfortable, and, and children are very good at sensing tension mm -hmm. uh, amongst a group of people mm -hmm. like that. Uh, what uh, advice do you have in, in helping children really navigate through that in a productive, healthy mm -hmm. way? It is important to include the children in the planning, uh, no, ma no matter what age, and to always realize that the children had no um, say in the fact that they are now part of a blended family. So it's really important not to put any kind of uh, pressure or tension on the kids that really is an adult problem. The, the adults need to learn how to navigate all of this successfully and do the best they can to, to make sure that their kids have a, have a great experience. Sounds easier said than done though. It, it is easier said than done, but I think that with open communication among all parties, with respect about what everybody's wishes are and compromise and flexibility, it certainly can get done. Uh, another piece of, of blended families, and broken may be a bad word, but separated families, mm -hmm. I think is a challenge also. Mm -hmm. Anything specific with, with that? And it's kind of sad that you see that the child, we're going to spend uh, till noon at this house and then afternoon they have to travel to go to this other house to make sure they have equal time and, right. and the, the, the child's kind of a, a baton in a way that's handed off. Yeah. Any uh, advice with that? You're bringing up a really great point and when talking with kids who have to go through something like that um, it, it's really hard for them so again I want adults to put on their adult hat and just because you want four hours with the kids 
because the other person had four hours with the kids, what really makes the most sense for the kids. And that means that the adults have to probably be a little bit more flexible than they really want to be. I see, I see, great, great advice. What are some other challenges that blended families and separated families face? Around the holidays? Mm -hmm. You know, I think the biggest one, William, is what you just outlined, and that is who do you spend uh, what time with? And what I try and talk with people about is that, um, say if we're talking about Christmas as a, as a holiday, one of the many holidays we're celebrating in this season, um, Christmas does not only have to be Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. You can say that if Christmas Day is on Friday, mm -hmm. then we're going to celebrate Christmas Day on Saturday, or we're going to celebrate it on Sunday. Uh -huh. And you can recreate mm -hmm. Christmas on Sunday mm -hmm. so that you can have you know, the whole day to do this and the whole day to do this with this family. It, it doesn't, it, if the media is telling us it's two months long, well, it could really be more than a night and a day. Right. You know, so that it can um, fit the flexibility that blended families need. I think that, that, that makes a lot of sense. How about the uh, working within the religious traditions that might be blended as well? Mm -hmm. Any advice for that? I think this is a fabulous opportunity for people to understand diversity in, in religious thought too, right? So mm -hmm. if you have a blended family where where you're adding uh, an additional faith to the family, this is a great opportunity to do both. Uh -huh. and, and just to see how other religions do it and, and, and learn. I think, that's, I think that's great, great advice. And at least from a child's perspective, probably uh, certainly with the, one of the most open times in our lives. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a way that they could kind of lead uh, some of the adults in the group, I would suppose. Yeah, absolutely. How about establishing um, uh, traditions with children? How, how best to go, ab go about that? I guess simply asking them is partly what you've said, but mm -hmm. other tips? Yeah, uh, well in addition to asking, I think that if there's a tradition that the person who comes into the family, into the blended family has that was really meaningful for that person, I think to just start it and um, explain to the kids why this is so meaningful. And um, you know, I, I, I love your dad, I love your mom, and I, and I love you guys, and I just want to share this piece of growing up with you. Mm -hmm. So let's try it this year, see what happens, and we don't have to do it again if, if we don't like it, but let's give it a go, you know, be uh, open-minded. I, I, I think that that's good. Probably uh, the curiosity is really good for all of us through mm -hmm. the holidays or any other time for that matter. Absolutely. Thank you. Up next. Christmas cheer should be abundant, but sometimes that Christmas cheer makes us sad and a little depressed. We'll take a look at how to turn the holiday blues around. Stay with us. Welcome back. Donna Toskus, Director for Methodist Healthcare's Employee Assistance Program, offers some help for those of us that might find ourselves feeling a little down this holiday season. Why do we feel down? Again, it's the holidays. Mm -hmm. But all of us seem to go through at least some point of that and can't even really point to a reason. I mean, I can't anyway for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I think we have a, a kind of a love-hate relationship with the holidays because we're supposed to feel warm and, and loved and cared for and excited, 
but there's probably a piece of everybody that's uh, grieving some sort of loss, whether it's a, a loss of a loved one in the family, a, a friend, um, a divorce, uh, loss of health, loss of income, whatever, um, loss of, you know, kind of feeling secure in the world. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you, on the one hand, you want to feel the gratitude, and on the other hand, you, you feel a sense of loss. So I think it's typical that people have some sadness at holidays. That, that, that makes sense. Uh, now, if we get beyond the, uh, what would be a typical or, or understandable thing that you might feel, going further to being depressed, what's the difference between mm -hmm. the two? I mean, and I guess, in other words, when would you maybe begin to be a little more concerned about uh -huh. how someone or a loved one might be feeling? Right. All of us feel sadness or loss or depression from time to time, but depression that really um, needs a little bit more attention is when it's longer in, dur in duration, when it's gone on for more than multiple weeks, when it interferes in your activities of, of daily living. So if you're having struggles to get out of bed, if you're not able to get your work done, if it's impacting your self-care, your sleep, your concentration. These are times when we want to make sure that we get some help for our depression. Do men and women experience depression differently? I think that women are probably more comfortable to feel depression as sadness and tearfulness. Um, men exhibit depression more in agitation and uh, recklessness. Um, and and maybe some difficulty getting along with people, whereas as women f maybe get a little bit more weepy. That make, that makes sense. That but as far as helping them get through it, similar um, approaches or or not. You know they are they are similar approaches. I think that for for men, you, you just have to be really blunt and open with them, and you know like hey. Why have you been so agitated? You could barely, barely speak to you. I think you just have to point out the behavior differences that you're seeing to um, men, you know, and to women. I, I noticed that you're coming into work later and you um, are tearful at your desk. You're tearful when you're working with patients. What you know? What's going on? We we have to be open at, to talk to people about this and not just kind of see it at a distance and hope it goes away. Uh, that's a, you've kind of hit upon some of the points, but are there other things that as friends or family we can do to help? Uh, I like the accountability piece. I, uh, that's one of the many wonderful roles my wife plays in our relationship with me. And it's like, <laughs> you need to change. And you know, this, hopefully she doesn't see this, but she's normally right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Normally right. You know, in addition to the accountability, I think the way that we can help people who are struggling with depression is by offering to help take on some of the load. Uh, so maybe um, meals or mm -hmm. uh, giving them gift cards to go out to the movies, um, offering to drive their kids places when they need to go somewhere, um, just some practical things to help someone who's depressed because we need to start thinking about depression in the same way that we think about other illnesses. And if somebody was struggling with uh, a medical illness, we would know exactly what to do. You know, mm -hmm. we'd offer help, we'd, we'd jump right in there and do, you can do those same things with somebody who's uh, living with depression. Great advice and, and, and a great, great comparison. So if I'm helping someone with a physical illness that obviously their treatment is uh, it's going to need more than what I can help with mm -hmm. then I'm going to encourage you need to to uh, go see your physician or right. uh, go to the emergency department or primary care or doctor or right. whom, whomever if it's someone that's dealing with depression and I'm in that same position where where do I turn well if uh, most businesses have what's called an employee assistance program where they're, they can get free confidential counseling through their EAP. So if they're working, we can, as friends, suggest to them, maybe you need to use your employee assistance program and go talk to a counselor about what's going on in your life. Um, I'm happy to drive you there. I'm happy to go with you to the appointment. Okay. And if they don't have an EAP, you know, talk to your primary care physician, talk to your pastor. 
uh, about what's happening so that they can direct you to the right place. And at Methodist, we have something called the Living Well Network, mm -hmm. and people can call the Living Well Network that uh, have nothing to do with Methodist. They can just call us. Um, they don't have to. Ha it, it's, co it's cost free and talk to a counselor over the phone, and then we can recommend uh, different places in the community for them to get the help that they need. That's very, very helpful. That's that's very helpful. It's because sometimes we, you just don't know where to where to turn right. to help you want to help, but we it kind of gives people some tools, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you also are, work with other businesses around EAP uh, besides uh, depression and things we've talked about today. Kind of what's the scope of service? Employee assistance program really help both the employer and the employee. So when working with employees to help them around some of their issues like depression, grief, stress, anxiety, work-life balance, family relationships, we help employees become more productive because all of these issues impact an employee at work. So if we can help them with those, we help them to become more productive employees and that's going to help the bottom line of the business. So EAP does counseling, EAP does management consultations, workshops and trainings, um, we do coaching, and we go in and conduct group sessions when um, there's a traumatic situation that happens in the workplace. So really a very broad uh, array of services that are there to help. Absolutely, and very reasonably priced. So, you know, no matter what business is out there, whether you have two employees or 13,000 employees, you can afford to have an employee assistance program. So we're kind of moving beyond what folks used to say was your personal life is your personal life, your work life is your work life. Oh, study after study shows that you bring your personal life to, ho to work and you bring your work life home and, you know, it's helpful to be able to be healthy in both of those areas. And the, the EAP uh, services seem like they really do give you assistance in each of the areas. Absolutely. Yeah. We do. Well, that's very helpful. I appreciate you being with us today. Thanks for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to have you. That wraps up our show for today. Donna works with companies other than Methodist. If you'd like to learn more about employee assistance programs, call Donna at 901-683-5658. I hope that Living Well will help you and your family lead healthy lives. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.